All right, the laws of physics have been around for probably over 14 billion years. Uh, we're going to start with just the first one, the first law of thermodynamics. And once we figure that one out, we'll look at some pressure volume diagrams and apply that first law. Just as a prelim to the first law of thermodynamics, let's talk about how gases do work. Whenever gases expand, they are going to be doing work, and we're going to call that work positive. Now, deriving an equation for that is not too hard, because you should remember from mechanics that work is force times distance. Now, we've got a gas and a piston that's going to be at a constant pressure that heat's put into it, so it's allowed to expand and push the piston out. Now, you should know the pressure definition as force over area. If you rearrange, F is going to be P times area. So now this equation becomes pressure times the area of the piston times the distance that it moves, which I'm going to call d. Now that can be changed to this extra space here. That's the extra volume. So area of the piston times that distance it moves. That is our change in volume. And that is our work equation for an expanding gas. Positive if it's expanding, negative if we are contracting it with our awesome muscles. Kablaoi! Here is the first law of thermodynamics in all its equational glory. You really just need to know what each of these terms, delta Q, delta U, and delta W, mean. And then working with it's pretty easy. Now, delta Q, that's the change in heat. And delta Q, is positive if heat goes in. And then it's negative if you take heat out. Somehow you're cooling the system with ice. Now this delta U, that's the internal energy, and that's how fast those little gas molecules are moving. We're only dealing with gases, so we don't care about potential energy, only kinetic energy. They move faster, thermal temperature, or the temperature is going up. Now, W is work. The gas has to be changing volume if there's any work being done. If the volume is going down, that means you're compressing it. We call that, or I'm going to call that, work on the system. And that is going to mean delta W is negative. If, on the other hand, the gas is blowing up, that's an increase in volume, and I'm going to call that work done by the system. And that delta W is going to be considered positive in my world, which is now your world. Sample problems with the first law of thermodynamics is child's play, as long as you understand the sign conventions. At least it would be child's play if children played with thermodynamics, which they don't because they're just little kids. But, pause it. See what you can do with this one. You should have started with your first law equation, and then you look at this, and you say that you can press a gas, and you do work on the system. So that is going to be negative work. And then you're looking for the change in internal energy, which is relating to the temperature, and your delta Q, you let 1800 joules escape. So since it's escaping, that's negative, 1,800 joules. You rearrange, and you've got a plus 2,300 minus your 1,800, and that's going to leave you with a plus 500 joules. Now, that's an internal energy increase of 500 joules, so that means the gas gets hotter and the temperature goes you compressed it, and gases do heat up when you compress it, and not enough energy was able to leak out to keep that temperature from rising. This first law of thermodynamics exists because of energy conservation, and I think sometimes it can be better understood by writing it like this. Now, Q, the heat, and W are your two means of either putting energy in by heating it, or maybe contracting it and putting work 
into the system or working on the system. Now, if you do that, it's an ideal gas. We're going to assume it's not going to change phase. And if you put heat in, maybe you're going to make the internal energy, this temperature, go up. Or maybe it's going to expand enough that it won't make the internal energy go up. But basically, whatever you do with the heat, whether you put it in or out, and whatever happens with the work, whether it expands or contracts, the combination of those two are going to lead to a change in internal energy. And those always have to balance each other out, and so energy is conserved. You'll often be called on to recognize and understand some pressure versus volume diagram for some uh, gas types of gas changes that you see all the time. The uh, one prime example is let's say you take a sealed canister of gas and you throw it in a fire. So let's say this is an aerosol canister. This is a horrible idea, by the way. Uh, it's going to start with a volume that can never change because it's in a canister. And as it heats up, as you know it will, the pressure is just going to go up and go straight up like this. Now that is very bad and it could explode. Now you want to think about the work done. There can't be any work done because there's no movement and no expansion. And so you can think that work, uh, or the change in work, uh, depends on the area under this graph. And it's a vertical line, so there is no area. So the work done is zero based on your graph with no area and based on the fact that you know the gas can't expand in a sealed candor until it explodes and then there's some work done. Now we're going to talk about isobaric which means a gas change that's going to be at a constant pressure. An example would be let's say you've got a hot air balloon that's all floppy and sad because it's not filled up and then you heat it with fire and then the air expands and the balloon gets all happy. But we're going to try and assume that that air is kept at a constant pressure because the hot air balloon is open to the atmosphere down below. Now the pressure, since it's constant, has to, it might start here with a low volume and since pressure remains constant, as the volume gets bigger, you just boop, have a horizontal flat line here. Now you might ask yourself, is there work done? The gas expanded, clearly there is, it would be stupid to not think that, and you look at this area and the work done in an expansion is positive and it is equal to this area which would be equal to pressure times delta V which we actually already derived if you were paying attention at the beginning of this video.